For more on how these rising rates are impacting the capital markets, we want to bring in Beth Hammock. She is co-head of the Global Financing Group at Goldman Sachs. She's former global treasurer of the firm as well. And Beth, let's talk through what this all means. Before we even get into the rates, let's talk about what we think is coming. Because you had Bill Gross saying that he thinks we're headed for a big downturn in the economy. You had Bill Ackman saying the same thing. You look at a lot of different measurements. We were talking about the you know subprime auto borrows 60 days plus past due. These are some concerning things that are starting to line up. How, how does that play out in what you're seeing in the markets? Sure. When we step back and think about where the interest rate markets are, you have to look at all the Fed speak we had last week, where the Fed is telling you that they've done most of what they want to do for the year. They've taken rates up pretty significantly. We're in a restrictive territory. And the Fed speak you've gotten is basically saying they're around where they need to be. Maybe there's one more hike. Maybe we're done. Somewhere in around there. Um, but the back end of rates, which has really been the mover over the past couple of months, has really put pressure. And part of what you heard in that Fed speak is that this higher interest rates in the back end is going to substitute potentially for more of those hikes that they need to do in the front end of the marketplace. But higher for longer. Do we believe that? If, if things roll over and they keep rates high, what does that mean? Well, that's the fundamental question, is, is the economy going to keep holding up? So right now what we've seen is that inflation has actually stayed reasonably elevated, coming down off of its peaks, but still reasonably elevated. The unemployment rate is still below 4 percent. That's a full employment type picture that you're looking at. And broadly, the consumer looks pretty healthy. You're definitely seeing some weakness at the very bottom end, um, as even Coca-Cola talked about, at that bottom decile. And you're seeing a little bit of that weakness. But overall, the consumer picture looks pretty good. So our economist, Jan Hatzias, has had a great call that we weren't going to be entering a recession. And our view is that that's going to be that's going to be the case, that we're going to stay in a pretty healthy market um, through most of 24. And we're probably the Fed won't need to cut rates until at the earliest, the end of 2024, and only very slightly. So if you step back and think about rates in a broader historical context, mm -hmm. this period where, where money was free from 2008 to 2022, these zero rates, a lot of people grew up with that, and they think that's the norm. I grew up in the 90s, so I think that a 3 to 6 percent yield curve, that to me feels like normal. And so this new 5 percent regime that we're living in, I think that could be sustained, and I think this could be the new normal on the forward. It, it, it's the new normal, and it feels normal to a lot of us. But if you have built a business model, or if you're a consumer and you've built your life around this idea of lower interest rates, that's going to be a pretty rude awakening. And I guess the, the question is, how big of a shock? Yeah, well, that's a transition we've been going through in the past couple of years, right? We've gone from this period of free money to adapting to rates being at 5%. And so if you look at the various markets, where it's starting to have an impact, like the leveraged finance market, for example. Mm -hmm. That's a place where you're feeling in loans these, the, the effect of those interest rates moving up because it's largely a floating rate market. And so if you look at the types of transactions that could have been done in 20 or 21, things that would have had six, seven, eight times leverage, now what the market is focusing on is interest coverage. And to make sure you have that one and three quarters to two times interest coverage, you're looking at leverage below five times in terms of the change. And so it's shifting how corporate America needs to think about the deals they're doing, mm -hmm. but those deals are still available. If you, okay. go, if you go back to 2006 or the 90s, you still had a very, you know, very healthy M&A calendar, just in a different frame. What, what kind of chilling impact does, does that have, though? You, you can still get the deal done, but it's not going to be the same structure. It may not be as profitable for a lot of people involved or as lucrative. Well, I, it, it may. I don't think that it's necessarily less profitable. I think it just changes the types of targets you're looking at from an M&A perspective. You need to have more strategic value, and so you're seeing a lot more strategic M&A rather than sponsor-backed M&A because you need to have some of those overall benefits of the combinations where it really makes more sense rather than just um, rather than just the free money adding to earnings over time. What about the high-yield debt market? How's that faring right now? It's faring pretty well. I mean, obviously, it's been a bit choppier, and you're seeing... Um, you're seeing focus on the underlying companies. You're seeing focus on the underlying credit health of individual companies and a lot more dispersion and selection between the different groups that are coming. But there's been, it's, it's been robust. There's been issuance coming to market. There's a lot of demand in the market. There's a lot of cash that still wants to get put to work.